interest rates that are low, the cost of products going up, and underfunded social security and market volatility can really create some murky waters and make financial planning and creating retirement paychecks that are going to last through your retirement pretty difficult. So stick around. Today we're going to talk about which issues are potentially threatening the importance of creating a rising income, social security facts that you need to focus on, and what it means to actually have a strategy for your investment portfolio. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searins, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Hello and welcome into Your Life, Your Money podcast helping you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement with Scott Searins, the president and financial advisor at Searins Financial Group. I am Ben George and glad to talk to you again. We're talking about murky issues today. We've got an article we're going to break down. Again, we've done this before and we like the format. So we're going to try it again and we're going to put this article in the show notes. It's from the USA Today. And it just talks about three murky issues that are making retirement planning much harder today than it's been in the past. And and I think this is going to be one that a lot of people can relate to and probably get some value out of over the course of the show. So hopefully you'll enjoy that today. Scott, welcome in. How are you? Hey, Ben. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Ben, I've got a question for you. I was okay. wondering if you have pets. And, and the reason I bring this up is my I, I don't have any pets, but my girlfriend has a dog or she's got a, a dog. It's a Yorkie named Molly. And <laughs> I've always heard, right, how like, uh, what is it, you know, young kids, basically they you're wrapped around their finger, right? And I feel yep. like I'm like, wrapped around molly's little paws right like it (laughs) barks and yep all right i'm gonna put it on the couch or play ball and and it's it's definitely got me and i i was wondering if you had any pets yeah i've got one dog one dog that's um about six years old now one will be rescued but great pup but yeah she's she demands a lot of our attention too (laughs) <laughs> it's uh it's interesting how quickly they can get spoiled right and i find myself like all yeah. right hey let's uh where's the treats to give molly you know and uh and uh make sure that she's got all the attention and um i also bring it up because i i was recently reading an article um that was on cnbc and we can mm-hmm. we can link to it in the show notes but it was uh how the owner or the ceo of petco not the owner the ceo was saying that the company's growth is inflation proof and it was just making me think about you know like how i basically spoil her dog molly or would try to right and Mm -hmm. it was talking about how just you know customers they don't see the customers pulling back on any sort of pet spending um he made a comment how they feel like they're resilient to economic downturn resilient to inflation and you had mentioned that you had a rescue and it said more people adopted um, pets during the pandemic. Right. And I just, I thought it was a really interesting article. If you think about it, people do spend a lot of time with their pets, but a lot of money on their pets as well. It makes me feel better that they, that that's <laughs> the case, right? Like that people aren't, because you hear often these stories of people taking a dog to the shelter, right? That they say, well, I can't no longer take care of it, don't have the money. So it is a positive thing, but also like I, I hear that and read the headline. I'm like, seems like a lot of over, it almost feels like overconfidence, right? Like, uh, Hey, we're untouchable. And it's like that to me, I'd be worried like, Hey, um, you know, this, this might not hold up. We might not be as, uh, as bulletproof here, uh, as, as he f- believes we are during this, during this period of inflation. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing, but I was like, boy, that's really putting your neck out on the line there. I mean, that's yeah. making a really bold statement to say, hey, our our company here is resilient to economic downturn. And of course, you know, our conversation is not to tell anybody to go out and, and, and buy stock in Petco. It's just, just overall general conversation um, because there's no company out there that's bulletproof. And, and, you know, we can look through history. Lots of them have proved it. And I, I was like, whoa, this guy's really putting his, his neck on the, on the line here saying this and made me think, yep, people do spend a lot on their, on their, on their pets. What's your dog's name? Ben? Maddie. Maddie. And I, yeah. so I'm, I'm guessing Maddie is uh, spoiled in the household. Yeah, she is. She is. I don't, I, know, I was thinking about the, the article and like, I don't think it's changed our habits at all Okay. with spending. Right. I mean, we have it budgeted for food. Sure. If, if, you know, we're not buying so much where you, you notice it, right? It's like one big bag of food for the last two months, right? You don't really feel that as much when you're buying it five or six times a year versus something you were buying, 
you know, two or three times a week or even weekly. So yeah, she gets her toys and we have, you know, a, a box delivered every month with toys in it. But like, I don't, I don't feel like we spend so much on or the, or the spending isn't as frequent enough to where you feel it yet. But sure. you know, maybe if we do, you know, if inflation does hit us hard enough, maybe she gets fewer toys, you know, but you still got to feed the dog. You still got to, you know, get some treats, but there are ways I think to limit your spending with pets um, and still be able to give them treats because, you know, they're you, dogs are, are very happy no matter what. So you doesn't matter if you're giving them a treat that's a premium treat or something that's, you know, that you can buy a big jar of for, for six bucks. So um, I, it's an interesting thought, but uh, an interesting article, but I'm, I wonder how long it will last because eventually like pets are still, you know, they are a member of our family and I'm, I'm a big, big dog person, but it is a spot where a lot of people will cut out expenses if it gets down to it. I, and I, I, I hear you there. And I, I think while um, the CEO of Petco might feel that they are, are resilient to inflation or if it's, it's, it's not impacting them, it, it's totally real, right? And it is impacting you and I and, and everybody out there as the, those prices of, of goods and services um, uh, go up. And, mm-hmm. and it, it is real. And yeah. so while they might think that, oh, hey, it doesn't you know, impact our business, their, their specific company, you and I and everybody else in the world are, are seeing it each and every day. And, and it does make us think differently over time about um, you know, what, what are those necessities in our, our overall budget. Yeah. And it's a perfect lead into what we're talking about today about murky issues. And, and again, if you're just joining us for the first time, thanks for, for being a part of the show. Uh, if you haven't found us, you can find us online at lifemoneyshow.com. That is the website with, with all of the podcasts, videos as well that Scott produces and a lot of great content. It's kind of a hub for everything that we do. Again, lifemoneyshow.com. And you can also call Scott if you want to discuss anything we talk about today or want to begin your planning process. You can do so at 847-235-6989. So this other article that we're going to talk about today is from USA Today. This is from Christy Bieber of Motley Fool. She's the author of it. But they point out three murky issues that increase retirement planning's degree of difficulty, especially with what we're going through in today's economy. And, you know, we want to kind of look through this a little bit, Scott. I want to get your thoughts on, on what is said in this in this article and whether you agree about it and how threatening do you think some of these things are and how concerned you are and your clients are along the way too because it's really interesting both the survey that was found but also you know these issues are so important for what people are doing with their planning process you need to make sure they aren't they these things aren't murky right you you're totally correct and you know it kind of talked about how Americans are lacking some of the basic knowledge to achieve a successful retirement. And, you know, I've got uh, clients with $500,000 and millions of dollars and multiple millions of dollars, and they all come in with those same questions. Um, you know, a lot of times for savers, right, it's, it's moving into that retirement phase, it's tough to become a spender. And so those questions are, how much can I spend and and not run out of money? And hey, what if I need to make a big withdrawal from my accounts? How do we do that? And what does that do to to my long-term picture? Or what happens you know, if the market were to correct. And I, I think they all have the same fears as well, right? Running out of money. And what if the market were to, to crash or correct? And to the article's point, you know, this is something that's, that's not taught in high school. It's not taught in college. It's not something that's, you know, taught through, you know, out our working years either. I mean, a lot of times, you know, your company says, hey, here's a 401k plan. You can put money into it and here's the, the company match. But it's not really guiding on what that means. And then, you know, based on how much you, you put in, here's what your potential income would be if you, you know, achieve that financial independence one day. And so, you know, there's just a lot of unknowns, right, for somebody that doesn't do this day in and day out. Uh, there's a lot of gray area op- out there. So if you're trying to do it on your own, um, sometimes that gray area is, you know, tough to operate in. And this is why I do this day in and day out is to to help teach this to people, to help them learn and understand and be more comfortable and, and confident with, with their money. And what I've found is, you know, if you if you have strategies and rules to operate around, that's what, you know, really helps provide 
um, kind of clear up those waters, I guess, if we're talking about yeah. murky waters, right? And we'll go through some, some different issues and things the article talked about. But having, you know, set strategies, having um, guidelines and rules to follow is, is what helps really guide guide a person down that uh, that path of feeling comfortable and confidence about about those their future and those questions and you know my goal is always people work really hard to to save up what they have mm -hmm. and my goal is to help them you know give them help give them that license to spend. So look forward to, you know, really breaking this article down. I think they have some some good points. I think there's some points in here. I'm like, I don't know where that really, you know, why that's important important um, and, and we'll talk about what is. So looking forward to it. Okay. So the three murky issues here are based off a recent report from the Insured Retirement Institute, as you mentioned, that just, it, it looked into the readiness, the retirement readiness of people, especially adults for their later years in life. And they came up with these three murky issues. So the first one here is Americans are confused about how much income growth is needed to offset inflation, right? Going back to our inflation conversation to begin the show. So the study showed that 26%, so about one in four workers, could correctly identify the level of income growth they're going to need to offset inflation over time. And obviously that's not a great number, one in four. Um, do you think and do you see this typically with clients that come in for the first time that haven't worked with you before and maybe they haven't really done a lot of proper planning are they prepared for inflation typically? I'm going to say not typically, right? Because I think a lot of times people are living in the present. They're living in today. So we're, you know, we're going to the grocery store, getting our groceries and, and maybe, you know, living within one year, right? So in, is not typically because the price, is, price of goods typically other than this year, you know, it's like, going up by pennies each and every time that we, we go to the grocery store. Inflation's always been there, right? It, it's not like the, the cost of goods have, have never been going up. It's, it's always been there, but it's just not something that I find that people are typically focused on. Now, recently, people are more focused on it because it's in the news, it's in the headlines, and, and we're hitting all-time highs, but it, it's not something that I find that t typically people are thinking about. So it is something that as we go through their their overall plan that that we want to make sure it's incorporated and that we want to make sure it's a part of it you know the article did I, I did appreciate this where it talked there's some really good I'll call it maybe statistics or or just some numbers in here that I think will help people kind of think a little bit differently so I'm 39 and so let's just say there's you know somebody out there listening that's that's my age or maybe they're in their 40s right Mm -hmm. And they're looking at their parents and they're going, hey, my, my parents are going to retire with, uh, looks like a million bucks. And it looks like they can achieve a pretty comfortable retirement on a million bucks. Well, that's my target. I'm going to try to save up a million bucks, right? Now, again, I'm saying a 40-year-old saying this. Right. If that 40-year-old, if their target was just a million bucks, that would be like retiring today in 2022 with 400, I think it said like $411,000. Right. And, you know, for some that might be enough, but for others, for most people, that's not enough. That's going to be a really tight lifestyle in retirement. So that's one area where for those that are still accumulating money, they're, they're still in that accumulation stage, whether they're in their 40s, 50s, or early 60s, is while maybe that goal, because you've heard it on the news, was a million dollars, for somebody in their 40s, well, that could actually mean that, you know, you should be targeting $2 million or $3 million to have what would today would be a million dollars. And and that's kind of hard to wrap our heads around, but, but that's what inflation is because the cost of goods, the, the cost of the car that you, you buy today is going to be more expensive in the future and the cost of goods are going to continue to go up. Now, for those, and I like these numbers too, for those that are, let's say, mid 60s, or they're just retiring today, they don't have to be in their mid 60s, right? Plenty of people financially independent, younger than that. But for somebody retiring today, that and the article says needed six was 65 and needed 60 thousand dollars in income. And I think a lot of people don't think on a yearly basis. So let's let's say that's five thousand dollars a month. Ten years from now, 
to maintain that exact same lifestyle, so now they're 75, they're going to need $80,000 a year or basically around $6,600 a month. So think about that, that, that $5,000 a month lifestyle or, or income that they need to maintain their lifestyle today. In 10 years, they're going to need at least $6,600 a month. And I don't find that people are typically thinking about that because they're, they're living in the present, right? They're just living at, hey, what do I need today? And so it's, um, it's a true part of planning, something that we need to plan for because food, gas, utilities, health care, long-term care, you know, everything's going to continue to go up. It's a lot to think about. And I think that, you know, I know and I'm aware of inflation. We're all aware of inflation. You know, we hear the word. We talk about it. Hopefully, if you are planning already, your advisor works that into your plan. Um, but, I, you know, we definitely have not felt it in a while. And it's like everything, Scott. You know, you get comfortable with, with kind of where you are and you forget about how volatile and how difficult and challenging times can be, right? With the market as well it happens a lot. You get comfortable when things are going up. Like inflation right now, we we know how much it can impact us. We're feeling it right now. And I think a lot of people are probably thinking about this in their plan now. Okay, I see what my advisor is talking about. We have to be prepared for this because in a blink of an eye, you know, from last year to this year, all of a sudden, you know, things have gone up. Five percent more, and that can be significant uh, in your planning process if you're already in retirement and not working anymore, right? Yeah, and when working with clients, one thing is that we just we don't want this to become a surprise. And so, if someone comes into us, you know, and when we're sitting down and we're talking about um, their overall plan and what they need to maintain their lifestyle, if they say, "Okay, Scott, you know, we need about seven thousand dollars a month to maintain our lifestyle," when we're putting together that plan. While, that's, while we might put in $7,000 a month for today, we're adding inflation to that. You know, inflation is, you know, around roughly averages, you know, that you could hear in the news anywhere from 3 to 4%. So we're going to put, you know, 3% um, inflation on those numbers. So that way, even though they said 7000 today, they'll be getting a retirement paycheck that will be more than that in the future so that they can keep up with those costs of goods and services. So while they might not be thinking of it, we're trying to think of it for them and add it into their plan. And especially for healthcare, um, mm-hmm. that's a big one. I mean, healthcare continues to go up by, you know, I'm just going to say we, we typically put like 5% inflation on, on healthcare numbers because they're going to continue to um, go up. And this is the other big reason I I know that I, you know, push on this a lot in our podcast, but this is another big reason to actually have an investment strategy in place. Because I find a lot of times, you know, people can go too conservative, meaning they they are approaching retirement and, and they shift their um, portfolio to bonds because they're like, hey, I'm in retirement. I've got to be safe. And reality is, is we need our money out there growing for us. We, we need equities in our portfolio because we not only need to keep up with inflation, we need to outpace it. Now, I'm not saying we put all of our money in, in equities. It all depends on the person's plan and how, many, how much they'll need to withdraw over the next five years. But but we need money over there because we need growth. We're going to have to keep up with the cost of goods going up. So inflation, definitely a murky issue for many people. So you want to make sure you have a plan to have that income growth to offset that inflation rate. So that's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two deals with Social Security. So the survey found that less than half, about 42% of Americans can correctly identify the, the average Social Security benefit. And a big chunk of them overestimate that benefit, which, as you can imagine, makes that problem even worse. So the murky issue here is that just most folks don't know how much Social Security will provide. And that's I hesitate to say surprising. I mean, I, I don't think everybody's looking at their benefit, but to not have an idea kind of what that's going to be, it does does kind of shock me a little bit, Scott. I thought that more people would be on top of this. Do you think this is, do you agree with this, that there's a lot of misconceptions with Social Security and, and planning? You know, I think one thing that the statistic that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was when the article was talking about how many people do or don't know the average benefit frankly, who cares what the average benefit is? My 
main concern is that people know what their benefit is, right? Because right. the average is the average and, and you could, you know, and, and I'll just give it here. I think the article called it out. It was um, $1,657 a month. But that really, me, I mean, to me, Ben, that really means nothing to anybody's plan because this this is an area, right, where, I mean, some clients, their social security um, at full retirement age will be $3,000 a month. So knowing the average to them won't do them any good. Some it's a thousand dollars a month, knowing that average to them wouldn't do them any good. And, and if you're, you know, a, maybe you're a teacher, um, who will be on a government pension who doesn't even get social security. So to me, knowing the averages, this is maybe where I differed a little bit with the article, you know, I don't think that does any good. But I think what's important is focusing on knowing what all of your potential income sources will be in the future. So if you're going to get Social Security, knowing that you're going to get it and what's your specific amount. And then if you're a person who's going to get a pension, great. What's your specific amount that you're going to get for that pension? Maybe you've got rental income coming in. Um, so, So first, I think it's just, hey, knowing what income sources that you'll have coming in in the future. And people know about them. Um, Maybe the murky issue there is that they're not necessarily sure what those numbers are and and how they'll play into their overall plan. Yeah, that makes sense when you put it like that. I mean, I I didn't really think of it as, um, hey, you don't really need to know what everybody else is doing. You need to know what your number is going to be, but that makes sense even if you don't know what the averages are, as long as you understand kind of where you are and where you stand, that's what's most important. Um, but yeah, it is kind of surprising that so many people overestimate it too. Uh, hopefully there's not too many people that are banking on social security without kind of knowing exactly what that number is going to be. Cause that could be trouble. Yeah. And I, and I did want to give some thoughts and insights cause it, you know, as we, we dove into social security here, um, Social Security is a huge part of, of retirement planning. And in my personal opinion, I feel like most people are taking it too early. And, you know, today people are living longer, more people are living into their 80s, more people are living into their 90s, breaking 100. And, and here's the deal, if you feel like you're going to live into your 80s, 80s is usually like that break even age on, you know, delaying your social security and waiting to take it until age 70. And so I just, hey, let's just throw some key facts out there. So people are thinking about this if they're going through social security planning. One, every year that you delay taking your social security, it grows by 8% each and every year until age 70, then it's, it's maxed out. The other one that I, I, you know, I really like to push on um, because, I, again, right, living in the present, sometimes we're just thinking about today and, and what we need today. But the one thing to really think about is that if you're a couple and one spouse passes away, you only get to keep one of the two social securities. And so a planning tech, I'll, I'll talk about a few planning techniques in a second. And then the third third key fact here is the cost of living adjustment. So we were talking about inflation earlier. And I mean, Ben, I know very simple question here, but Hmm. if you were to get a raise, a 5% raise, okay, you're going to get a 5% raise. Yep. If you were to get that on $3,000 or, you know, you could get a 5% raise on $3,000 or a 5% raise on $2,500, which would you take? Uh, $3,000. Right. And, and that's, I, I know it's such a simple question, but that's like the power of delaying from full retirement age to age 70. You're going to get those raises, those cost of living adjustments on that higher amount. So it sets you up kind of for a bigger number to um, compound off of. So want to just to kind of give those key facts. And then, you know, from a planning a perspective when it comes to social security, I find a lot of people are just trying to look at these, you know, estimate their life expectancy and go, okay, hey, here's my break even age and and take social security based on that. But really the other thing that they need to add in is how much they have saved up and what are their monthly expenses. And because sometimes, right, if depending on how much you've saved up and what your lifestyle expenses are, it may help to delay your social security, get a larger amount, 
And it doesn't mean you have to delay your retirement. You're just delaying your Social Security. And in the meantime, you bridge the gap with your portfolio. So uh, a quick client story. I've got uh, uh, a client and both spouses retired at age 64. But as we went through the plan and put together the plan for them, they were retiring at age 64, but what made most sense was for one spouse to wait till at least age 65 to take Social Security, and the other spouse were, were working to delay it until age 68, and it was all coordination of multiple puzzle pieces, meaning um, how much they had saved up, other pensions that they have coming in, and then you know, how much they've they've got in their portfolio. And, and so you might be thinking, well, wait, how can they retire without taking Social Security? Well, what we're doing is we're going to take bigger portfolio withdrawals today to get to help them delay and let that Social Security grow. And then once they take that higher Social Security in the future, they're able to then, you know, kind of uh, trend back or, or, or um, not take as much out of their portfolio in the future. And it's projecting that's, you know, that's the best for them. So there's a lot of planning that, that goes involved in, in taking Social Security. And in my personal opinion, a lot of people do it too early and aren't really tying it to all the other puzzle pieces in their life. We've done some past shows on Social Security, too. So if you want to get more info on that, go back through our catalog of shows. Uh, most recent, just a couple of months ago, we went through Social Security changes you need to know about um, starting the year. So a lot of great content there. So if you want to dive more into that, again, check out our, our website, lifemoneyshow.com. And if you have questions for Scott about Social Security, which is a big big topic, a big deal for income and retirement, you can call me at 847-235-6989. All right, let's go to this last takeaway on withdrawal rates. So this study found that half of Americans weren't sure how much they could take out of their investment accounts. And most of them couldn't figure out a safe rate to take out of their accounts while not worrying about running out of money later in retirement. So I guess, are you surprised that withdrawal rates are such a murky topic? And, and how do you help clear this up for somebody? You know, I'm I'm not surprised one bit. Um, I, I think this is the number one question because this is where there's so much uh, I'll call it gray area out there and so much information out there in, you know, if you're going to Google or YouTube or wherever, right? And and this is that number one question that people come into us with when um, sitting down to, to partner with us is, okay, how much can we take out of our portfolio and make our money last? Because you go online, you're going to find the 4% rule meaning that you can take 4% out of your portfolio inflation adjusted over time. But then there's recent articles that says, hey, that 4% rule, it's it's outdated, it's way too high. And some are going to say that it's way too low. And at the beginning of the show, this is, you know, I just kind of talking about putting guidelines in place. And this is what we do for for our clients. I'll call it, you know, retirement income guardrails. And so if you you think about driving over a bridge, a long bridge, right? And you're started to veer off to the right. What are you going to hit? The guardrail, right? Yep. And I think that people look at retirement income kind of like driving over a bridge without guardrails. The market crashes. Oh, no. I'm falling. You know, it's like go, veering off to the right of that bridge. I'm going to fall off of the bridge. I'm going to crash, meaning I'm going to run out of money. And in, in retirement income doesn't have to be like that. It can be like driving over that safe bridge with guardrails, meaning the market's going down or your account value is going down. Well, we put those guidelines in place. We put specific guardrails in place knowing that, okay, hey, we hit the guardrail and we need to make an adjustment. So we're not turning the faucet off. We're not turning the retirement paychecks off. We're just saying, hey, and I'm just making up a number, but hey, can you, is it okay? Do you mind just, you know, taking a hundred bucks less a month right now because the overall market's down, something that nobody can control. And so we just need to take about a hundred less right now. But same thing on the other hand side, right? Like if you're to veer too far to the left, meaning the, the economy continues to do good, the stock market does good and your portfolio values go up. Well, we should also know when we can take an increase and you know, make sure that we're maximizing what we've saved up. So I do believe, yeah, this is a is a murky issue. And, and this is one where you really want to put guidelines or as I've nicknamed it, guardrails 
around your retirement withdrawals. So that way you've got, again, comfort going into the future. You know where you might have to make adjustments and how much those adjustments might be. Yeah, withdrawal rates are such an important thing to to have in place and have a strategy to plan for. And a lot of people aren't. A lot of Americans aren't sure how much they need. And that's one of the murky issues in this USA Today article. Um, what other murky issues would you add to this list, Scott, that you see? And we kind of mentioned healthcare a little bit and those costs tied into inflation. But is there anything else that you would maybe tack onto this list? You know, I think a um, couple issues. One, I would call it asset allocation, or somebody could just say, hey, how their portfolio should be invested. And uh, I'll give you a good story here. I had a, a potential uh, prospect or client come in and, and we're sitting down around the round, round table here and just having a conversation. And I said, hey, you know, um, tell me about how you, you, know, you got to your investment selection today. And the person said, well, you know, actually, I, I've a couple years away from retirement and I was just having a conversation. So, so we just moved my, because I'm a couple years away, I, I just moved my portfolio to, you know, 50-50, 50% on the safe side, 50% on the growth side. I said, well, why? Well, just because I'm getting closer to retirement. And, you know, I find all too often people are investing, but investing without a strategy. And just because we're getting closer to retirement doesn't mean that, you know, we have to throw everything into safety. Because that first murky issue that we talked about was inflation, the cost of goods, services, or groceries, vehicles, you name it, gas, right? It's all going to continue to go up in the future. And so we really need money on that growth or equity side. And yes, we need money on that safer side. So that way, if there is a market correction, we've got money to go to and withdraw from. But what it really told me is is that that person didn't have a strategy in place. They didn't have an income plan in place. And, And I know that we, you know, we continue to talk about this and preach this on on the podcast here, but having that income plan in place, knowing what your income guardrails are, understanding your social security, putting inflation on it, what your lifestyle means are, any sort of extras out there, that's going to guide us on what kind of withdrawals that you need to make from your portfolio, how much we need to carve off in safety so you are okay in case of a market correction, but then also how much we can leave in equities and keep on that that growth side so that way you've got money for your future as well. So I think that's that's a murky issue, right? Like sometimes people just see on their their 401k or on the, you know, they go online and there's those little sliders that say, hey, do you want to be aggressive? Do you want to be moderate? Do you want to be conservative? That's a murky area to me because that's really, you know, you're you're doing something without a strategy. You're just kind of, you know, taking a, a a gut approach at something, but it not, might not actually be right for you. It might not align with with what your plan is. So, f- so one is putting a strategy in place. The other murky issue is taxes. I know we talk about that a lot on mm-hmm. on the podcast as well. Is you know where are you putting your money today? Which tax bucket are you putting your money into today? But then also once you get into retirement. Should you be doing things like Roth conversions and shifting money between buckets? So I find that, you know, again, it's not something that we learn about in school. It's not something we learn about in college. And it's and there's a ton of information out there. And so those are a few of the other murky issues that, that we help clients through um, so that they can have, you know, confidence in their plan and in their future. You know, I'll add to the takeaway from me from this is that there's a good chance that you're listening to this and these issues are murky for you, but you know, judge, judging by this survey, you're in the majority, right? And a lot of these things, uh, most Americans are murky on these topics and these issues. So you're not like you're, you're not behind the curve necessarily, but it just goes to show why it's so important to work with someone that can help you clear up these murky issues and provide answers and provide guidance and, you know, align your strategy to meet your needs and goals for your future. So again, that's why you work with a financial advisor while we're having this conversation today. And I think it's so important because as we see, you know, the vast majority of people in, in some situations as inflation showed us just aren't prepared for many, many of these things. Yeah, I think that's a great 
point, Ben. Sometimes when it comes to our finances, finances are very personal. So then we spend time trying to research these things on the internet or uh, I don't know, you know, go to books and, and because we want to try to keep all of this to ourselves. And and like you said, hopefully the statistics show that um, if you are kind of wondering about these things, you're part of the majority, not the, the minority. And, and don't feel like you have to go about it alone. Right. That is the key. So if you want to learn more, again, lifemoneyshow.com. We'll put this podcast up. You can find podcasts on Social Security as well as taxes and some other things we discuss in the show in further detail on our podcast. But also there's videos as well. Uh, Scott has his Retirement 360 Blueprint process, and those videos can be found on the website as well. If you want to call him directly, set up a time to meet, you can always do that at 847 847- Two three five six nine eight nine. All right, Scott, we will wrap it up on that note. Uh, enjoyed the conversation. Uh, give Molly a treat for me. I'd appreciate that and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Hey, thanks, Ben. Great conversation. Look forward to our next one. Siren's Financial Group is an independent financial services firm that utilizes a variety of investment and insurance products. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. AE Wealth Management and Siren's Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Siren's Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Siren's Financial Group, Inc.